Tipu Sultan battled the British army on the southeast coast of India in 1780. He fought them with a new type of weapon, iron swords mounted on gunpowder-fueled projectiles, the first tactical missiles ever used in warfare. These first rocket weapons killed British soldiers more than two miles from the missile's launch sites and spread a great deal of terror among the Redcoats rank and file, as the rockets were nearly silent projectiles traveling at 300 miles per hour which burst into a fog of shrapnel in a 20-yard radius from the impact zone. The British did two sensible things. First, they got out of range of Tipu Sultan's rockets, and then they went home to England and built better rockets. William Congreve, an engineer in the King's Royal Ordnance Division, figured out how to replicate the Sultan's rocket bodies, but then also figured out a cleaner mix of black powder propellant. The Royal Ordnance metal workers cranked out tens of thousands of missile bodies, and by the time of the War of 1812, the Royal Navy prepared to take on both Napoleon and Bonaparte's allies, the Americans, with these new high-tech weapons. Congreve's rockets weighed about as much as a bowling ball and were built with a cylindrical metal body and a bulb-shaped warhead section. The rocket bodies were strapped to wooden staves that acted like kite tails, stabilizing their flight trajectories when launched. The British also came up with the brilliant tactic in rocket warfare that Tipu Sultan had missed, put a lot of rockets on board a ship, and then sailed that ship up and down the enemy's coastline, firing at towns and harbors. The enemy would be as terrorized as the Redcoats were in India a decade earlier. The plan worked, especially in the British attacks on American cities and towns. Royal Navy sloops, converted into flat-top barges called rocket ships, were towed all over the Chesapeake Bay and the Potomac River. On September 9, 1813, the rocket ship Erebus shelled Alexandria, Virginia during the land invasion of Washington, D.C. Despite strong counterattacks by land-based American cannon batteries, the British managed to capture 22 prize ships in the Potomac River. The following week, the Erebus joined several other ships in the attack on Baltimore Harbor. The main American defense of the harbor was a substantial star-shaped redoubt called Fort McHenry. The fort's cannon ranges were slightly shy of the Congreve's two-mile reach, but the cannons were more accurate at extreme range than the rockets, especially if there were any winds, which tended to make the rockets turn into the wind and miss their targets. The battle on the night of September 13th lasted all evening, with the British firing an estimated 3,000 rockets at the fort. The result? If you know the song, you already know the answer. The Star-Spangled Banner, in triumph, still waved the next morning. The British ceased their attack as dawn approached and slid down the Chesapeake away from an unconquered Baltimore. The failed rocket attack on Fort McHenry affected American military opinion on rockets being useless as weapons for more than 125 years. America remains the only country in the world with a mention of rockets in its national anthem. Visit BAE.com for more surprising space facts.